So let me ask you this, do you know what the symptoms of malware are? If your Mac did become infected, do you know what types of your information might be at risk? These are just a few of the questions that everyday people have about the topic of online security. And today, we are gonna get answers to a lot of those questions by asking them to one of the best people in the industry. Now, I don't normally have guests on my show, but today is a special exception. Today, I am joined by Thomas Reed, who is the Director of Mac and Mobile Security at Malwarebytes. Thomas Reed, thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, thank you, David. So, it should be noted that today's video is sponsored by Malwarebytes. If you do decide that you want to purchase it, you can save 25% just by using my special discount link, which you'll find down below in the video description. Thomas, I was wondering if you wouldn't mind start by introducing yourself to our viewers and tell them a little bit about your professional background. Sure, yeah. So my name's Thomas Reed. Uh, as David mentioned, I work for Malwarebytes. Uh, and I uh, got into computer security, specifically Mac security. I originally created a program called Adware Medic. That program was uh, purchased by Malwarebytes, and it is um, the foundation of Malwarebytes for Mac. The dream of every programmer to get acquired. <laughs> How about that? And then work for them. Not bad. Absolutely. So, Tom, I reached out to a bunch of my old clients and I asked them what were their main security questions. And the number one question that people came to me with was, what are the key symptoms of malware? I would say the probably the most common symptom is going to be manipulation of your web browser. Uh, and that can be something like your home page or your search engine being redirected to something else. But in some cases, especially with the worst malware that you might get infected with, there may be no symptoms at all, unfortunately. So the next question I received from uh, one of my old clients is what does malware actually do? And also what kind of information are these hackers targeting? Uh, that's a really good question, a very broad question. Let's tackle that by first addressing the two different kinds of malware. So there's adware and there's mal real actual malware that's after your information. Um, adware is more interested in getting ad revenue. Uh, it may collect some data about your browsing habits and that sort of thing, uh, but typically your data from your hard drive, you know, your photos, your financial records, all that kind of information is not really a target for adware. When it comes to real malware, the really nasty stuff, uh, then it's interested in whatever it can get its hands on. Photos, uh, especially if you have any particularly sensitive photos, those are of interest. Uh, it's interested in financial data, password information. So if you have a password manager, it will try and grab the password vault from your password manager. Uh, it, the, the hackers behind it may or may not be able to actually crack into that vault if you use a good password on it, uh, but they're going to grab it anyway just in case. And then malware will also do things like capture audio from your microphone on your computer or capture video from your web camera do screen captures, which can, which can show things like logins to a banking site. It can show passwords. It can show all kinds of sensitive information. Um, and so basically, you name it, whatever information you have, the real nasty stuff, that's what it's after. All right, Tom, so the next question I have for you is if you think that your Mac might have been infected by malware, what should you do? And also important, what should you not do? That's a really great question, especially the what should you not do part. So what you shouldn't do is what you're probably inclined to do automatically, which is to go to Google or some other search engine and you search for the uh, symptoms that you're seeing. When you do, you have a high likelihood of ending up on a scam site. They'll use those search results to lure you in and then convince you to buy a scam product that won't actually solve your problem and will potentially even make things worse. And then you've got to figure out how to remove that software in addition to the malware. So instead of going to Google, what you should do is go somewhere like malwarebytes.com and download our software. And all of you at home can save 25% off that purchase with the link down below. Just a reminder. So Thomas, one of the risks with malware is that while software like Malwarebytes can remove malware, now it's getting more and more sophisticated to the point where it can actually reinstall itself. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so that 
happens sometimes. It happens less often on Mac OS than it does on Windows. Uh, and where we see it the most on Mac is with browser extensions, especially when it comes to Chrome. Uh, so with a Chrome browser extension, uh, it gets installed on your system, but then if you have Google Sync set up and enabled, then what will happen is that extension will get copied across all of your devices and you'll have that extension everywhere. And then if you delete it from one machine, for example, if Malwarebytes were to delete it, then it can just pop right back on because Google Sync says, oh, look, you're missing this extension that you've got synced. Let me put it back for you real helpfully. Um, so in cases like that, you kind of have to take some manual steps removing extensions from Chrome. Uh, you may also have to do things like change browser settings, like the home page and the search engine settings, because Adware loves to mess around with that stuff and make all kinds of changes. Uh, so when malware gets into your browser, it can really be a pain in the butt. I'm going to pause this interview for a moment just so that I can show you what Thomas Reed is talking about. If Malwarebytes detects malware or adware on your system, here is exactly what you should do to prevent it from reinstalling itself. The following steps should be followed on every device you own that currently has Google Chrome. At the top right of your browser, you should see an icon that when you click on it, shows you your name and the email address currently signed in. Notice that here on my system, Sync is currently set to on. Let's now click on that and click here where it says manage what you sync. For now, let's change these settings from sync everything to customize sync. And now I'm going to disable extensions, settings, theme, and open tabs. When we're done making all of our changes, you'll be able to come back here and turn all of these back on. But for now, while we're operating, let's sedate the patient. The next thing that you'll want to do is click on here where it says extensions. My advice is that if you see anything in this list that looks suspicious, you should probably err on the side of caution and remove it. There is one more place that I want to make sure that you are aware of here in settings. Now, as Thomas Reed mentioned, one of the areas where malware can sneak in is here in search engines. Up here at the top, you'll see on my computer that it says what it's supposed to, that Google is my current search engine. But if you see something like this, that is an example of malware. I would recommend that you click into manage search engines. And again, if you see anything here that's suspicious, just remove it. Finally, if we go back one page, this is the last thing that I wanted to show you. Here where it says on startup, you just wanna make sure that it's opening to a specific page that is one of your choosing. Another question we had from a lot of people was about the topic of VPNs. Now, for any of you out there who are not familiar with the term, a VPN stands for a virtual private network. And before I let Thomas comment on this, I just wanna say, we are actually gonna do a dedicated video on the topic of VPNs. That's gonna be coming out very soon. But for now, we wanted to make sure it had some inclusion in this video. So Thomas, what do you think? Should the average everyday Joe and Jane have a VPN? Absolutely. I think that VPNs are very important for both security and privacy. Um, so let's consider uh, for a minute a case where you're in a, a coffee shop and you're on the Wi-Fi. There's no password on this Wi-Fi. It's totally open. There's some guy over in the corner. Maybe he's got his laptop open and he's monitoring every single data packet you're sending and receiving. That's unfortunately really easy to do on an open Wi-Fi network. So the way that you protect yourself in that situation is through a VPN. And that sends all of your network traffic through this encrypted tunnel between you and a VPN server. And that's really important for security because it keeps that guy in the corner over there from seeing anything that you're sending. It's also important for privacy because it masks what websites you're going to uh, and, and other things such as your location. When your data is being sent through a VPN, then to the website on the other end, it looks like you're coming from wherever that, what, that VPN server is located, not from the coffee shop that's around the corner from your house. So that's really important for your privacy as well as your security. Now, one thing that's really important here, there are a lot of VPNs out there. Some of them are very, very good. 
but there are a lot that are very, very bad, especially the free ones. Uh, if you've ever heard the saying, if it's free, you're the product, that applies a lot to free VPNs. If you're using a free VPN, they are profiting from your data that you're sending through them. And that is exactly the wrong thing that you want to be happening with a VPN. One of the topics around security is the issue of passwords. Now, Thomas, I don't know if you know this or not, but a couple of years ago, I created a tutorial on my favorite password management app, which is LastPass. And I remember at the time when I created that video, I thought, oh, this, is, this, is, this video is gonna be a hit. It's gonna solve everyone's problems. And when it came out, I very quickly realized that the topic of, of passwords is so stressful that a lot of people won't deal with this issue. What are your thoughts? Yeah, passwords are extremely important. Uh, you know, your passwords are the keys to your digital life. And I've seen stories where people have had their entire digital lives basically stripped away and taken over. So one of the best things that you can do is use a password manager uh, like LastPass, which David mentioned, uh, because a password manager helps you remember. Now, why do you need to remember? Because the best passwords are the ones that you can't remember. The best passwords are ones that are, you know, 30 characters long, a mix of upper and lower case numbers, symbols, uh, just complete nonsense. Yeah, I feel like so many people are, when they think about security, they think about the security on their computer, but they don't really think about the security of the sites that they use out there on the internet. And so having a password manager is not just about keeping the data on your computer safe, but also the data that you have out there in the world. Absolutely. And a lot of people get the mistaken impression when say their email account gets hacked that, oh, they've got malware. That's often not the case. Usually it's a hack that happened through, you know, a weak password or a data breach somewhere that revealed a password. Um, and usually there's no malware involved at all. So is there a more secure web browser that people should be using that is less susceptible to malware in general? So I'm a, I'm a Mac user, obviously, uh, and I've got to say, my favorite is built into the system. It's Safari. Uh, I really like Safari. I'm not going to go so far as to say that it's invulnerable because nothing is. Uh, but Apple has done some really great work in Safari, especially on the privacy side of things. Uh, and actually, that can help with malware as well because uh, sometimes malware can come in through advertising. We call that malvertising. And so if you are using a good browser that has good privacy options, that can really go a long way towards protecting your, your web browsing experience from malware. Folks, I wanted to end this video just by giving you a final resource. If you have any additional questions or concerns that potentially some of your information may have been compromised or that you might have experienced malware, you can always reach Apple through their Apple Care support phone number, which is 1-800-275-2273. And yes, I know that number by heart, and I said that without using a teleprompter. Thank you so much, Thomas Reed, for joining me today. And be sure to watch for our future video just about VPNs. There's a lot of information to cover. That video is gonna come out in January of 2021. Thank you so much for joining me, Thomas. Uh, thank you very much, David. It's been fun. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, I really appreciate it. If you hit that simple thumbs up like button, leave us a little comment down below. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you for watching, everyone. This is David A. Cox with Tech Talk America. Class dismissed.